Now, David Spears has long been the political face of Sky News, of course, and as he has grown, so has this network over the past two decades. He's become the preeminent political journalist and interviewer of his generation. Sadly, he's off to the ABC, obviously going into semi-retirement. Only joking, David. I couldn't just let him slide off without a final chat. So much for joining us. Look, in 19 years, nearly 20 years at Sky News, do you know how many hours you've spoken live to air, unscripted, <laughs> no net, no safety wire, without crashing and burning? Look, if only I'd negotiated a deal to get paid by the hour uh, for that sort of thing, that uh, then I'd be a lot happier. Look, it's been a lot, uh, and it seems, you know, every time I remember, we had about a decade or so ago, things really started to go pretty crazy in Australian politics. We had the first of these big leadership spills, and you thought, boy, we'll never see something like that again. But then it happened again and again and again. So there have been a lot of, a lot of time for all of us to get a lot of practice with these sort of live, unfolding, unwieldy political moments. It's extraordinary, mate. You're the best... In the business in an age where so much television is scripted and sort of pro forma you have just sat there for countless hours as events have unfolded around you relaying facts are keeping your cool it's a, it's been amazing to watch i remember when i first met you about 17 years ago when i was working in the howard government the sky news was a little broom cupboard almost literally yep. in parliament house uh, you were hardly known uh, sky news were hardly known but you were always willing to interview anybody about anything live to air, and you've somehow built a huge reputation and a huge influence in the gallery from that. Uh, was it a deliberate strategy? Look, I don't know how deliberately. That's very kind. Um, look, we, we knew that we were barely known. I mean, we used to joke at the time that half the people we'd ring up, you'd, you'd spend the phone call explaining to them what Sky News was, uh, that we weren't the horse racing <laughs> channel, um, Sky Sky Racing, uh, and then try to explain, no, 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 we, we're a news outfit and we're, uh, and we're very serious about politics and we'd like you to come on. Um, it, yes, it, it took a lot of work to get known, to get a bit of reputation, to get a bit of trust and credibility that people were willing to come on. Uh, I think it was actually, uh, I've got to give credit to John Howard as Prime Minister, who, as PM, and a very successful one, uh, really used his authority to give us credibility as well. He came on fairly regularly after a while, uh, and, you know, that put us on the map in many ways. And, um, you know, it showed to others that, yes, this was an outfit to be taken, to, taken seriously. Yeah, it's been incredible to watch because uh, as you've built your authority and your reputation in the gallery, so Sky News has as well. Uh, as you know, as our viewers know now, it is the station that is watched throughout Parliament House and now around the country for anybody who's interested in breaking uh, political news. And it's in no small part due to your own work, David, that that's happened. Uh, is it? Uh, how does it feel now when you, you know you're running an operation and fronting an operation where most of the newsmakers look to, to get their guide, to find out what's going on. Look, it is... Um, I, I would say I don't dwell too much on that while I'm doing the broadcast, but it is a responsibility I think we all uh, should and do take fairly seriously, knowing that, you know, what goes on in our programs on Sky uh, can really influence the national debate a great deal, can shift things during the day. You know, there will be moments where something that happens during an interview or a story that's broken it can change the direction of an issue entirely, uh, you know, even to the point where, you know, political parties will have to uh, drop uh, a policy idea altogether if one of their senior figures has really, you know, stumbled or buggered it up on air. Um, so yeah, it, you have to be aware of that responsibility, I think, and I think we all do take the job pretty seriously, even if we're able to have a bit of fun on air along the way. Indeed. Now, of course, we hear a lot of talk and criticism and discussion about the 24-7 news cycle. Uh, in many respects, you and Sky have been responsible for delivering that. Mm -hmm. Has that helped or hindered the democratic process? Look, this is, a, this is a great question and one I've certainly tossed around in my head over the years. You're right, uh, in, in an Australian context, our arrival and growth as a news channel did have a big impact on the policy debate and the democratic process. I think then the second wave and arguably a bigger impact has been social media. Um, but, look, I, I don't think it's black and white. I don't think it's all good or all bad. I do think the good things have been uh, that it has 
democratised the process. It's made politics a lot more transparent. You can watch not just our interviews, but news conferences, for example, with the Prime Minister, the opposition leader, whoever you want. Uh, and our, the ability for us to bring that to people, I think, has been a good thing. It's been a big part of people understanding a lot more about what goes on, uh, what their elected representatives are doing and how their taxpayers' dollars are being spent. I think we've given a platform to backbenchers and more junior frontbenchers who just never got any airtime before at all. Now, that can be for better or worse, but I think largely if it, for, it's been for good. I think it has seen a lot more ideas uh, and debate into the public you know, square when it comes to these things. And look, I don't think that's all bad. Yes, there have been some downsides. I'm not going to pretend there haven't. Uh, it, it is harder to get reform done. I mean, today's a great example. GST, let's change it, gets floated by a mere government backbencher and it's dead by lunchtime. The Prime Minister has to rule it out. Why? Because of the cycle. The media cycle means you can't ventilate these things for very long if they're unpopular. You've seen this from all sides, Chris, and as I say, it's, a, it's not all good, not all bad. I think on balance, though, what we've done has been a positive. Well, as you say, David, some of the interviews are for the better, some not so. Let's just look at some of the, your highlights from over the years. I'm a fixer. I fixed it. How did you fix it? I fixed it by funding it in another way, which you'll find out in the budget. Why can't you tell us? I want it to be a surprise for you. Hang on. You haven't seen what she said, but I support what my Prime Minister said, so... Well, what's your view? Well, my view is what the Prime Minister's view is. Surely you must have your own view on this, Bill Shorten. I support what our Prime Minister has said. But you don't know what that is? Well, I'm sure she's right. What is metadata, in your view? The, well, the web address. It does tell you the website. Well, it, 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 t it tells you the address of the website. That's the website, isn't it? Well, I, the, my, 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 the... The company tax plan, what is it going to cost over 10 years? The, 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 cost of, the cost of the plan is set out in the medium-term outlook and shows the budget returning to balance. What will it cost? It ensures that we'll have stronger jobs and growth. But at what price? This is not a difficult question. Will Labor keep the school kids bonus? The, the, well, we've interpreted the baby bonus. The school kids bonus. I'm sorry to argue with you on this, but I think you misunderstand the government's own position. The position you are actually I'm wanting to change to, uh... Prime Minister because of. If you're wrong about this, Craig Kelly, do you still want to change Prime Minister? <laughs> what a cavalcade. This is where I'm glad I'm interviewing you rather than the other way around, Spears. So many gotcha moments, so many historic moments. What stands out? Is there something that stands out as a real highlight for you over the past 19 years? Uh, look, there, there are many. Uh, listening to that, though, there, there are a few memorable ones there. I mean, the George Brandis one when he was Attorney General about metadata. Uh, you know, you knew once that interview got to that space that this was uh, this was turning into a train wreck. This was not going to end well, uh, and it and it didn't. It created a lot of um, international headlines and so on. The David Feeney one, though, um, he, look, uh, he's a he's a good guy, David Feeney. I bumped into him a couple of weeks ago uh, at a at a bar. But that really that interview, without overstating it, it, it delivered a big blow to his political career, uh, and he never really recovered from it. Other interviews that went pear-shaped for a politician didn't always end them. I mean, Christopher Pine, for example, not a great interview, but, you know, he bounced back after that and went on to great success and came on plenty of times after that for interviews with me as well. So, you know, plenty of them are memorable. Uh, and from my position, I'm the lucky one just asking the questions. I really don't envy those who do have to sit on the other side of some interviewers. A couple of questions about your move to the ABC, Spearsy. I'll start off with the serious one. You've got friends and contacts from all corners of politics. You love the contest of ideas, as you should. Are you worried you're stepping into a bit of an ideological monoculture? No, that's not a worry uh, for me. Look, I, I know the ABC has its critics and, and Chris, you're you know, probably chief amongst them, as you'd, uh, you'd acknowledge. But I do think it's an outfit that... Uh, you know, I don't necessarily want to talk too much about it here, but I do think it's an outfit that treats news very seriously uh, and is about, you know, um, fact-finding and news-gathering, and that's really my attraction there and, uh, you know, one of the reasons I want to be part of that and, um, uh, and, and certainly be part of a, a national broadcaster that uh, reaches a lot of Australians and does an important job in our country. Yeah, well, good on you, Spearsy. The other point there with the ABC, though, is uh, you've got an incredible work ethic. We were saying how many hours of live TV you hosted at high quality for one hour a week now at the ABC. What are you going to do the rest of the week? You're going to go to fat. <laughs> 
<laughs> Look, it, uh, part of the uh, part of the attraction too is a different style of, uh, of of journalism for me. I mean, as you say, uh, uh, every day at Sky we're churning out a lot of um, great TV, great political coverage uh, as well. But this is an opportunity to step back and do something a bit more considered, uh, put a bit more production in, uh, a different style of, of political programming essentially. So that's part of the attraction. I somehow don't think I'll end up restricted to just to just that, but uh, I'll, I'll certainly spend a bit of time anyway trying to get that right uh, for starters. Well, I somehow think uh, you'll do a lot more at the ABC, uh, David. It's been a pleasure to work with you in many capacities. Best of luck to you at the ABC and to you and your family for the move to Melbourne. Mate, thank you. That's very kind. I'm going to miss, I'm going to miss so many people at Sky, but uh, I know we're going to stay in touch. And go easy on me when I'm over there. <laughs> no guarantees, mate. <laughs>